Hi, I'm Matt Tukaki, I'm the editor of Otrup, and today I'm in conversation with Mark Spinks, who's not only the chairman of the Babana Men's Group here in uh, Sydney, Australia, um, but it's a, a pretty popular character in the Indigenous community right across the country. So we're going to be talking about jobs and employment, entrepreneurship and a few other bits and pieces. Um, uh, also a really special event that Mark and the team are hosting on the 9th of October here in Sydney. So Mark, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Not a problem. So let, let's talk about jobs, um, first of all. Um, there is a report out that suggests that we're still not making a huge amount of headway when it comes to Indigenous employment. What do you think, from all of your experience, what do you think are some of the barriers that we still have? Um, when you look at the, the, uh, the men that I work with, um, a greater portion of those that have done some heavy time in, in jail. And I've always had a discussion with my blokes about the extra support that they need. The other thing that bugs me uh, on a daily basis is those that come, come out from jail are just, the gates are open, they're put outside and expected to go and get work, you get on something, you're supposed to get a job. They haven't got a roof over their head, number one. Number two, they want to find out where their missus is because she hasn't been to see them for 12 months. Mm. Number three, they want to find out where their mob are so they may be able to get a roof over their head, then get their life in order. There's a lot of, lot of barriers to those men uh, before they look like getting a job, before their job ready. There's a lot of work that has to be put into it. It's not something that can happen in a week or a month. There's a lot of extra work you need to put into these guys. So from, again, from your experience, I mean, are you, you're obviously making a huge amount of headway in what the Barna does, um, but what more can we do, particularly from a business perspective, what more can we do to support the work that you're doing here in the, in the community? I think that we, we need to look at uh, a lot of uh, men and women who have uh, stepped across the line in life and gone to the dark side. Um, but need an opportunity. I, I'll give you a very good example. We, we've formed a very good friendship now and built the bridge with the Glen Rehab Centre at Wild on the Central Coast. Now, those guys have gone, been through drugs, they've been through jail, uh, they've been through domestic violence. I mean, they're blokes that have gone to the Glen to change their lives. Mm. And I look at these guys and think, well, I'm going to support you as much as I can. And that's what we've done. We've encouraged them, we've, we've used them for our Anzac Day Colour Digger March to lead the, lead the parade. Um, their dancing performance would just bring a tear to your eye. These are guys that would have done it two years ago, but they're back in touch with their culture. And that's a huge, huge key element of what these guys are going to do and change their lives and then get ready for work. We held the uh, Indigenous Entrepreneurship Forum in Redfern uh, in July and you, you were in the audience and, and that sort of thing. Do you think there is a, a bigger role that we can play as a society in also supporting Indigenous entrepreneurship? Getting more people from Indigenous Aboriginal Australia into owning their own businesses? I've got to say this, I was impressed with, and it's the first time I was in the same room with the man, Dr John Hewson. He talked about um, young people, regardless of age I suppose, but people with ideas and business ideas and how people in his position can help them to make those, those dreams a reality. And I was impressed with that. I don't think that gets a lot of publicity, because it's the first time I heard that. Mm. Um, I think ideas and, and support like that need to be broadcast uh, more thoroughly. Mm. Um, because that was the first time I'd seen that, but I was, I was really taken with that. And there's a lot of Aboriginal uh, men and women out there who have those ideas and those dreams, but don't know who to turn to. Mm. Uh, and it's just not advertised. Uh, in my eyes, it's just not advertised enough or out there enough. You know, we live in a world of social media and, and media engagement now. I think there's a lot that can be done with that. I see a lot of uh, Entree Hub and what they do now with the social media because I've got involved in the last couple of months. And I like what's happening there because the message is getting straight out, mm. instantaneous. Um, and people are talking and it's generating that conversation. And I, I like that. So, two, two more questions. I only quick fire questions, probably not. Um, we've got a new Prime Minister in the Lodge now, in, uh, in Melbourne Thank too. Thank you. Well, I was just about to ask you, do you, do you think with this now new Prime Minister, uh, do you think we can see or expect a lot more from him in terms of you know, achieving some real outcomes? I've known Malcolm for some years now, um, Director of the Redfin Foundation with his wife, Lucy. And I've seen Malcolm do a lot of things and, and talk to me about a lot of issues around Indigenous affairs. 
And the support he's given to Aboriginal people that I've personally been involved with, like shoes for kids at school and the gym equipment for his house going to school and everything. The man never broadcast that. He just did it. He didn't solicit uh, media attention because of what he did. And I'm noticing now that he's copping a bit in the media because he owns a house at Point Piper and he's got properties in Paddington. The man worked for that. Mm. He, he's a product of a, a single parent. I'm a product of my grandmother. My grandmother raised me. And I can relate to what he went through. And look what he's done. You know, the man, he, he's a self-made man. And the media will start on him now. And that's unfortunate. And that's sad for me. But I, I support the man. I like the man. Like, he's a good man. And there's a lot of stories I like to tell about what I've seen him do. Because um, I know he did it. Mm. And um, I know where his heart is. And thank God he's there. Good, good. Final question. We've got a big event coming up on the 9th of October here in Sydney. Um, it's all to do with Mental Health Month, yep. um, which is happening in October here in Australia. So tell us about what inspired you. So well, first of all, tell us a little bit about what the day is going to be about and what inspired you to, to put this, this incredibly great event on. We, we've done a couple of these over the years and we do it around National uh, Mental Health Week. Um, I've had a few of the guys from my group that um, have taken their own lives. And it's, it's broken me at times, there's times that I just couldn't come in here and, and uh, I felt bad about it. And I almost thought there's something that, um, that I'm not doing and I, and I couldn't put my finger on it. And we decided to do this. Um, I had a gentleman, like we used to walk with a group on a Sunday, we walked on uh, Manly Beach one, one year with Luke Fordstein, the commander from Redford. And this guy driven all the way to the central coast and he's waiting for us on the, uh, the south head of uh, Manly. He slept there all night just to be with us. He took his own life a few weeks later, and, and I always thought there was something that I missed, or that he didn't tell me, and uh, uh, I tried with that. I did. And I decided to do something about it. But I need help to do that. Mm. Um, it costs money to do what we do, and, and this isn't a plea for cash. Um, to get people out on an island, I like the idea because there's no outside influences. They're on an island, they've got to tell us what their issues are, what they feel is missing in the community, what service providers they don't know about, what they do know about, and they can share that information. Um, I like what we do on the island because we did a job expo on the same island about a year ago and we got kids' jobs, especially on Sydney Harbour Ferries, which have never happened before. So I know what we can do on that island. Um, we need help to do it. Do I think I've got all the answers? No, I don't. Um, do I need help from organisations like Suicide Prevention Australia? Yes, I do. Because we've got to do something about it. Because if we don't and we know people that are involved, it cuts us, it affects us. And uh, I, I don't want to get you that again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. So we've been in conversation with Mark Spence, and as you've probably been able to tell, this man is not just involved in running a men's group in Glee called Babana, he's involved in a range of different issue areas from business and small business and jobs and employment, mental health. Um, so it's champions like Mark Spinks that we like to give a shout out to. And so for anybody out there that's watching this video who is able to support Mark and the team, Google Babana, have a look at the link on the website, click through and get in touch. Because the work these gentlemen do is absolutely incredibly amazing. I'm Matt Tukaki, thanks for joining us.